O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm for today is Psalm 42, verses 1 through 7, on page 643 of the prayer book. We'll read it in unison. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think on these things. How I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for the bishops of your holy church, especially the right Reverend James Russell Kendrick, Diocese of Central Gulf Coast. With our family in the Anglican Communion, we ask you, Father, to bless our common life. Today, we especially give you thanks for the Diocese of Athabasca, province of Canada. We pray for those in any need or trouble, especially Rachel, Virginia, and Tom. We pray for the repose of the soul of Kirk. Bless Kelly, Kendall, Nathan, and all those who mourn. We give you thanks for all the blessings of this life, especially for the ordination of Santi Rodriguez. And now, O oh Lord, we offer you our thanksgivings and petitions with our lips and in our hearts.
Holy and loving God, creator of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do what you desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the, ki of the king of Armen, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because the Lord had given victory to Armen. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Aramaeans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, ten thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. The word of the Lord. Could you keep reading because it doesn't make much sense. The continued word of the Lord. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent you my servant Naaman, what you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure him of leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance to Elijah's house. Elisha sent a message to him saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. While I was growing up, my best friend was named Lizzie. Lizzie was the youngest of six children. The older were grown and gone away. And I was the oldest of four. My siblings were all within several years of me. My parents were around all the time and vigilant about our behavior. Lizzie had a nurse who didn't supervise very closely. My family had two big dogs, a collie mix and a setter mix, and Lizzie had a miniature poodle who was very smart and didn't shed. In the pecking order of our relationship, it went Lizzie's five older siblings, then Lizzie at the bottom, and then me under her. There was a jingle on the television sung by children to advertise pet food, and Lizzie used to yell it at me often. My dog's better than your dog. My dog's better than yours. My dog's better because he eats kennel ration. My dog's better than yours. With this, she claimed superiority over not only my dog, but over me and my family. This bullying dynamic went on for many, many years until we grew up and life happened and we became peers. My dog's better than your dog has always summed up for me the agonistic world of competition and the struggle for survival and domination. At one end of the spectrum, the status of what kid had the faster, stronger, and better dog to the world of corporate advertising in 
in which one pet food company would conquer another to the war for control of land and resources among tribes and peoples and nations. That's the narrative and social world of the Second King's reading today, the story of the healing of Naaman the Syrian. It reflects a brutal world. Coveted power is exerted from high to low. There are army commanders and there are slaves captured in war. And there are subordinate wives of male leaders who can make their slaves obey. My professor named this curiarchy. Now it's called intersectionality and it describes the interlocking systems of domination and subordination. It works with greatness, bigness, strength, and victory. Talents of silver, thousands of shekels of gold, sets of garments, horses and chariots, commanders and kings, all contrasted with smallness, youth, slave girl, a man of God. The wisdom and the good news of this tale is in its surprises and its reversals and its irony. A mighty warrior afflicted with leprosy. Do we fear or pity him? A slave girl captured in war, do we pity or take her seriously? Powerless herself, she knows where power is to be found in the prophet who is in Samaria. Naaman, thoroughly expert in the my dogs better than your dog world, thinks he should be in touch directly with the king and believes he should bring tons of precious metal and money in payment for his cure. He doesn't expect to be introduced to the scrawny man of God, Elisha. But once he is, he anticipates a dramatic display of pyrotechnic healing wizardry to defeat his stubborn disease. And instead, he gets third-party instructions to go wash in the River Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be clean. The Jordan, he says, my river's better than your river. More arguing, more resisting, more clinging fiercely to customary expectations. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. The people of Israel were once top dog in the world with land and control and freedom. They took that as an account of the world as it was. And they took it all for granted until they lost their dominance and lived in exile in a strange land. Without worldly power, they learned where true power was to be found. Irony, surprise, reversal, humor, in the story of Naaman the Syrian, the mighty warrior, speaks of God's mercy, even to the mighty. The captive slave girl who knows the source of healing is ancestor to Mary, God's lowly servant. And she's grandmother to the mother from Tyre who demands healing for her daughter, possessed by a demon. And she's the sister 
of the Samaritan Water Seeker by Jacob's Well. Scripture, even as it reflects it, calls into question the taken-for-grantedness of my dog's better-than-your-dog world, and it resists the rightness of the master-slave system. Scripture calls us into another level of reality, into another dimension of what's true, where you receive the kingdom of God like a child, where you receive by giving, where you lose your life to some modicum of might and control and power, and has also known something of the humiliation of being teased and bullied. As a family, as a people, as Christian majority, we may have been at the top of the pecking order and have also known loss of status and exile. We still live in a my God's better than your God world. And to me, the gift of this story of the healing of Naaman the Syrian is that it asks us all to resist the temptation to take that control and to take it for granted and to treat others as subordinates even when we get on top or get the majority, but to know that in this world it is the word of the cross, it is Jesus of Nazareth who heals and saves, who diffuses this reversal of now I'm on top, now I'm on the bottom, now I'm on top again, who heals and saves not only us, but our enemies as well. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Amen.